Did you did you make it go bleep? Let's go. Let's, let's go, go bleep. Let's go bleep. Let's go bleep. Hey guys, welcome back. On this episode of Pro Noob RC, we got our friend's truck on the bench tonight in the studio. Uh, this is the uh, RC four-wheel drive Marlin Crawler. Can I get to say that all again without all the A's? Hey guys, welcome back. This week on Pro Noob RC, we are working on the RC four wheel drive Marlin Crawler. This one happens to belong to a friend of ours, Tyler. He asked us to put a little bit of weathering and damage into the body as it is a hard body and they don't really get too beat up. This one you can tell is being run pretty hard. It's got a lot of scratches and I believe it must be injected in the red plastic because everywhere it scratches showing through red. So um, yeah, it's a pretty cool truck. He's got his three linked in the front and suspension in the rear. Uh, he actually has a full size uh, Toyota, very much like this, a little bit different, but uh, pretty close. Uh, yeah, now the Marley Crawler is pretty cool. It already has a bobbed bed on the back and it's trimmed up high to fit the rear bumper in there nicely, like we like to do on ours. So that's pretty cool. We don't have to do any extensive body work there to kind of miff this one up a little bit and kind of beat it up. I did buy some more Mike Blue paint with him. I'm going to talk to him and send him pictures as we go and see if he wants me to um, do the body damage and then repaint it or whichever. We'll figure out when we get down there. So, uh, yeah, basically, you're going to start, dismantle everything, and get it ripped down into a pile of parts. We'll do a little bit of work cleaning up things like remounting his ESC form and stuff like that. Uh, the tape, the uh, sticker on the. Uh, ESCs come peeled off, so that happens on them, no problem. We're going to fix that up. Uh, anything basically under here, we don't need to touch. We can put that off to the side and, uh, yeah, rip this guy apart. Uh, we're going to do the interior on it. Um, he does want a door notch cut into the side, so we're going to cut out the door notch. We're going to eliminate the handles. Uh, the side windows are going to be eliminated on it. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do our basic thinning out all the edge of the body panels to start making them look thinner and then we'll start doing some rust and rot from the inside and we'll start putting some dents and damage with some heat into it like we did on our 1.6 scale Jeep in one of our most recent videos with weathering so uh, I'm gonna get this thing ripped apart and uh, we'll yeah go from there. Okay, so clearly we've got this stripped down into the piles of parts we need. We got the dash, interior, I uh, was worried how we we're going to get it separated, but apparently it never was attached, so that's even better for painting and detailing working on it. Um, the cab, everything came off the cab nice and cleanly. Everything came off here nice and clean. We're going to uh, now start uh, putting a bit of damage into it and uh, do a little bit of pro noob to it. So, have some fun with it and uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so step number one, you'll see up close on the GoPro footage how we cut that nice because it's kind of like smoothed out to the edge. So we cut that like a flat lip of a fender would have all the way along there and there. We thinned out the edge of the bottom of the door. So now we can go through and start adding uh, some of the burn through with the Dremel. Uh, very simple. Low speed. You start working in that area.
Okay, so very simple to get the nice look of a hole like we did in the fender right there. I started from the back and I kind of started going in a, in a oval pattern because I wanted kind of an oval shaped hole through there. So I started going oval pattern, larger, and then as I came through the middle, I kind of went around the hole and tapered the outside edge back. So when you see it from the front and you look through the hole, the material looks thin. It doesn't look like it's thick with a big hole through it, which just looks silly. And then I took the little ball tip, what I'm using, a rotary file ball tip on there, and I just lightly kind of danced around the edge of the hole to give it different elevations. So when we put our rust around the hole and let that start growing on there, it'll be a little bit different elevations like rust does. It kind of bubbles up and, you know, like separates the layers and the crap and the metal. So, yeah. And then for the edge, you can just use the ball, knock a couple down. Uh, we use the ball, we use the, um, and two drums. One of them is, um, 3 16 and the other one is 1 8 inch drum. Um, the ball is the best for making the rust detail. Before we go too much farther and start putting holes in it everywhere, we want to go through and start adding our uh, detail for rust and, or uh, dents in now. Dents and scratches, which is the hard part. It's going to involve some heat and a lot of uh, planning uh, or just trial and error. Um, it's kind of hard to plan something out, so it's just usually best to go trial and error and kind of, you know, do your best at it. So. Okay, so we pretty much got our uh, plan of attack going on, on here. We started with the first dent, and once you're started, you just kind of get in a flow and keep going. And uh, yeah, so I've decided we're going to open up the hood in a couple spots, give it a couple wrinkles in between the fender and the hood line, but not all the way in the front, so it maintains the rigidity that it needs. So the idea is to do this and not weaken the body. So I've made those relief cuts in the hood now, I'm going to go through on the back side and I'm going to thin out the metal on it. Metal. <laughs> and then I'm going to add some heat. You want to make sure you get all this fluff out of there before we start adding the heat and melting that all in. And then if you just let the heat kind of go on its own, it will start to roll and wrinkle up the edge naturally. You don't have to really do anything to that, which is nice. You push down a little bit on it. So there you go. And that's just by thinning it out and then heating it up and just letting the heat do its thing. Get some fluff on the edge here we can take off. So I'll give you some hood damage there. And then just rinse and repeat. So yeah, we're gonna kind of go through and do that throughout. Um, one thing he does want is the driver notch cut in the door. So we're gonna go through and show you kind of some how we figured out we're gonna do that design. We've already got to figure it out, so we're going to get that on there. And we still need to make sure we mind that it doesn't explode inside of the dash and it still fits the chair. So uh, we're going to go through and work on this and the box, and then we'll come back on a couple updates as we go with a couple other little build tips that we can pass on to you guys for doing this. And then we'll uh, get to make it some rust.
Okay, so that's coming along pretty good. We got some damage up in the top of the cab corner here. Not so much on this side yet. We'll get into that later. But we got this side coming along pretty good. We got this fender all buckled up. We got rust holes through here. We got them, um, the plastic all roughed up and ground down so we can start to add some rust on top of that. And uh, yeah, a big dent in the door to scrape. Another thing, uh, like we were talking about earlier, is um, he wants a door notch for the driver set in. So we have the rear of it to a slight angle. We got, went, went pretty much to the top of the lock across and then back up with a couple inches in here. Uh, we found a reference photo of a few Toyotas. Most of them seem to have this notch. There is a notch that goes this way, this way, and this way. Kind of, you know, the, the double seam angled one. I kind of like this one more. It makes more sense getting in and out and stuff if you're to use it, right? Because once you notch a door, you just weld it up and jump in and out the hole. So uh, we're going to go with that cutout on it. And uh, then, yeah, we're going to bust a box together. And then we're going to sand this guy down. Okay, so truck is looking fantastic. It is ready for paint. The last thing we want to do is um, create an inside door seal for our door sill for when we did the notch in the door so we can put on a ledge so it doesn't just look like we cut a hole in the door. It's because when you do this, uh, you, you plate off the top of the door so you can get in and out nice and comfortable. You can rest your arm and crap like that. So uh, we're going to make that just like uh, you would. So simple enough. Styrene's your friend, you have your pencil, all you got to do is hold your piece up and line it up on the side where you want it and then literally just trace it out. <coughs> Use your hobby knife, cut that out and then just snap that out from that piece, boom, done, magic. Okay, we cut that earlier, but. <laughs> and then uh, simply glue that in, in the right orientation to where you lined it up. And then you just need to cut a couple little pieces and put on top. So we just wanted to show you that, so there's no questions later when you're like, hey, where'd those dorsals come from? Uh, so yeah, basically, yeah. So we're gonna cover that with a couple nice pieces of fit styrene. Uh, you can do it all just by laying a piece on, trace from underneath, because this one you can get to from both sides. So you can lay another piece of uh, material just across the upright panel, one across the, here, one across here. Trace out all the pieces, cut them out, put them in. They can hang over and the styrene sands so quick, just sand it down until they all fit together nicely. So it's better to cut a little bit proud, which means a little bit beyond the lines, and then just bring it back in because styrene is it's just ridiculous like a couple passes of piece of sandpaper and it'll fit so okay so we've got both of our side door notch trim pieces laid in there you see we put the piece on the inside to give it some depth of support so it's not just cutting the notch in the door and not adding in that um that door sill whatever you want to call it, place to put your arm something like you would, you know you would have to do if you cut open the door because the door is wide so you want to incorporate that into it and uh yeah so i'm just going through cleaning up, sanding down, trying to make this as smooth as possible. You're going to have different height differences between this notch here. So I'm just going to make this shape right into that. So it all kind of looks the same. And then there is a small gap between the dash and where the, um, what's it called fits in. I quickly threw some paint on the dash while I was waiting for glue and such to dry. I just did the typical, uh, tan with the brown that I like to do on the Toyota dash it looks pretty good we'll go through and weather that up I also did the interior I weathered the seat I'm gonna weather the dash show you guys how we did that on there so we don't have to waste too much of your time with this this is more of an exterior project anywho so you can see when they're on there you can see it's a small gap in here I might add a little piece to fill that up so it sits right against the dash nicely. So, Just something I've been going back and forth with. I might just leave it so I can get this back to the client quicker. I know that's one problem I have is I like to keep coming up with ideas as I go so it makes the builds awesome but the time turnaround is a little bit long. So yeah, I'm um, just taking my knife and trim out the extra styrene in the middle. You'll be able to go down until you hit the super glue. Once you hit the super glue or CA glue line, um, just start sanding from there because you can start cracking the glue and then just break apart your work. So, so yeah, knock that all down. Grab your 
sanding tool if you've uh, made one like ours and go through and just sand everything out. You can do it by hand, but these are these are nice. Getting in those little corners. Now you can go through and you can fill the back gap or the front, but we made sure that when the truck is together, you're not going to be able to see in there, so we're not going to worry about filling in the front or back of this piece of styrene on the side here. It is securely glued across the bottom, um, so I'm not too worried about it. I might run a thicker bead across the bottom because I know Tyler likes to tear things up and beat up his truck pretty good, so he likes to have fun put them to work. So, And that's what they're for. So. So I'm gonna finish these up, you guys. That's uh, pretty simple there. And then we're gonna get back on to uh, doing the body. After talking with him, um, I'm gonna have to redo the blue paint on it. He wants more of a freshened up paint job with the damage, so it's kinda, kinda a little bit backwards from what I do. So I'm gonna have to go through and mask off a lot of the areas where I've done the damage. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna mask that off. I'm gonna use just a uh, cheap acrylic paint that's uh, washable. Uh, water washable. I'll brush it all into all those areas and then I'll quickly uh, go uh, spray the body in the blue. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's a little bit dirty, a little bit dusty. That's fine. It's, you know, it's going to get tore to heck anyway. So, um, and then quickly, hopefully, wash that off before it, um, it dries, but it should work. Um, we've used Vaseline and stuff in the past, but it's real pain in the butt to wash out and then uh, try to get paint to stick after. That's more of doing like sign work and stuff like that, logoing, uh, lettering on old cars and stuff like that. It's a trick that comes from a different time. Um, I could use liquid mask and put liquid mask and brush it all in and then go and peel it out after, but I don't have time for that stuff today. So we're gonna cheap it. So I'll get done that, and then we'll get back uh, where it's time to start masking up all these parts and get them ready to go. As you've seen, the damage and destruction's already done. So we just need to get that into paint, and then rust, and then, uh, yeah, get her done. I think I'm gonna paint these actually, uh, I'm gonna mix up some paint, mix, mix in there, some, a couple silvers I'm gonna mix together, come up with a nice metal, metal color, just a raw metal. Some flat aluminum, and I think chrome silver would make a nice mix, so. Okay guys, so decisions had to be made. I decided to uh, repaint the body in light gunmetal to get the silver that I wanted. And then we are gonna use fast color, uh, fast mask or whatever color, yeah, liquid mask, right. Fast color and put that into all of our damage. So after we paint it, hopefully it just peels out we put it in thick enough. I don't know if this is gonna work. It should, so let's find out. I'm gonna put it on real thick, so it's easy to take off after. You just wanna get into the real deep areas, obviously, and the areas we're plowing on rusting and such. And the inside of the fender wells, I'm just gonna do the whole insides of them. There we go, let that sit. We will come back and check on that guy tomorrow. It is gonna take at least 24 hours to dry with that much material on it, so we're gonna work on the interior and such like that. Um, this video is more about the exterior, so we'll just show you how we did that when we're done. So, um, catch you back tomorrow morning. Check on that body, and uh, we'll go there. Okay, so the uh, liquid mask technique that um, I was planning on trying worked out well. I was able to just put some liquid mask with a uh, paintbrush onto the areas go back with a knife after I painted it blue, the blue that we wanted to get back on there, and uh, peel it off. A little bit of added effect was the liquid mask took off the shine from the light gunmetal and made it look really metallic looking. So I know we got some weird patterns like this and stuff going on, but once I put the rust into all that area and start to make it pop out, it'll look good. So now comes back with this step. Oh, we also did some uh, leak seal inside the box, give it some texture, and then I'll rough that matte black over top, finish it off, make it look like it's been bedlined. So, cool little added feature we threw in there. So, from this side, we end up taking a little bit of our 220 sandpaper. 220 is nice for getting in and kind of roughing things up. So we've already done that with the Dremel, as you remember earlier. So now we can go back through and uh, just kind of work the edges and kind of feather everything out. You don't really want a sharp edge there. And this side, you can kind of see, we've already gone through and done it. I've taken this, I've added scratches across the body in just random places. And all that is just going to play into extra added detail and effect, right? We put some nice scratch 
scratch like that, you know, just kind of mess with it. So, um, yeah, we got this big old dent across the tailgate here. We're just going to feather that out. And now you don't want to go down through the silver back down to the red plastic underneath that the truck is cast in. Okay, so this side we've already prepped and we got ready. The next step is to apply our rust. Before we apply our rust, we want to just double check and make sure we've got all the edges done nicely and there is no actual liquid mask sitting behind the wheel well. This lip here, because we're going to be applying the rust and that stuff will come off later. And if it is there, it will take off the rust. So we want to make sure that's nice and clear, uh, clean and clear. And we want to do a little bit on the inside and the outside. So uh, the rusting technique, pretty simple. Uh, we use the same one that we always use, the Deluxe Scenic Rust. Pretty simple name. It's made by Deluxe Materials. Uh, you can pick that up at Eliminator RC. Uh, pick it up on their online store. And then it's about the only place I know to get it. So I would just go with that. So there's many ways to do it. They tell you in here to, uh, to mix this many parts with that many parts. Just ignore that. So in here you, you have your metal filing, it's just iron filings. You want to put a little bit in the bottom. You don't need a lot, a little bit goes a long way. So I put maybe a quarter teaspoon in the bottom, just a pinch. Now this is just basically what they call your scenic rust binder. Basically, it's just like a super thin glue. You only need a very little bit of this. Couple drops. Now, I also like to use these little pointed um, Q-tips. We got these Eliminator RC also. Got one stop for everything over there. And you just want to mix that up so you have a nice blue kind of paste. Once you get the kind of nice light blue paste and you kind of see everything's nice and wet, it won't fully mix in. If you, if you have it too thick, it's clumpy and it doesn't spread nice. You want to just get it a little bit loose. I like to put something to hold the thing up on an angle, keep all the uh, metal filings run to the bottom. So then, yeah, you just want to kind of paint this stuff around and in all the uh, areas you want rust to be. It's a few part process. This is just part one, so. You'll have to go through and mix this stuff uh, quite often. It likes to thicken up pretty quick. It dries fairly quick too, which is nice. For best results, you want to get it on a nice even coating everywhere the first time. You don't want to have to come back and reapply. It kind of makes some kind of goofy layers to deal with. I can tell you how to deal with those in between. Just message us if you do run into that problem or didn't rust the first time, give us a shout. But by the end of this video, you, you should be able to figure out all the tricks we have for this. To make a Z-Rust. They have a method that is on the instructions on the scenic binder and we've tried it and it just it doesn't work as well as what we do, so we'll show you what we do. Okay, so we've got uh, one side done here. We didn't quite mix up enough to do both sides, but like I was saying, it does dry pretty quick. So you can just give that a wipe and a scrape out, and then we can mix up another batch when it comes time to do the other side. But for the sake of making a video, we're just going to let this side dry. And I'm going to go grab... The front half of the chassis that we already started working on and show you how we get to that point so i'm gonna go throw this off camera and let this dry and we'll rip back okay so this uh rust kit comes with a scenic rust developer 
and uh, you take this stuff, it's blue kind of liquid, you brush it onto that stuff, and I believe what this stuff does is it helps, um, it's got a little bit of peroxide in it, and it helps kind of break down the glue that is held to hold the metal in place, uh, expose the top edge, and then it kind of makes it rust a little bit, but we wanted heavy extreme rust. We live in Canada, everything up here just rots to high hell anyway, so we got this jug we call rust. Um, it is one cup of hydrogen peroxide, two tablespoons of vinegar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. When you spray that on metal, it turns it to rust almost instantly. So um, we use that on top of the filings to get that rolling. So, Okay, so off to the side here, I take one of these Boston pizza trays and I got a little bit of the scenic developer in the front and I've got some of the rust stuff in the back. You can see here it's turned back brown because we've been applying it to the body. So the first step you want to do is take your developer and then brush this stuff kind of, you, you kind of want to brush away the top layer of glue and just expose the bits of metal, but not hard enough to make it like wash it off, right? So you can kind of get in there and scrub around a little bit. And then two or three passes with the scenic developer, I find, kind of helps really expose the, uh, the metal filings on the edge. And you don't have to go heavy. Remember, don't wipe too hard. I am using a, a firm brush with these Amazon brushes. Remember, we bought 1,500 of them for $15 or something stupid. So, um, yeah, nice firm brush. I'm not really wiping. I'm more of just doing like a dab, kind of just lately, kind of making like, kind of swirl it around too, kind of helps. I don't know. I'm just talking. We'll go with that. Whatever works for you. So now that I get that going, I like to take some of our um, our rust mix that Jesse and I have here mixed up and lightly start painting that on top. And then I like to hold the body flat like that so I can kind of fill that little groove. And this stuff kind of, like this liquid has picked up the metal so it's already started taking the color of the rust so that helps with it too. And then I like to start just filling these guys in with that seam developer still being a little bit wet and that helps it all just kind of eat together and kind of eat their metal and just start uh, rusting like instantly so I find if you let any if you let developer dry and then go put the peroxide on it really doesn't work you kind of have to do them both at the same time so and then that brushing that little tapping kind of just dancing around with the tip of the brush really 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 helps so make sure you guys are uh, kind of thinking you know you gotta you gotta peel back that top layer of glue so you can expose the metal bits a little pro tip when using stuff like this which we found it worked best by doing some lots of rusty works we like rust so that dries keep that drying eventually I shouldn't turn it over but I have to show you guys you're gonna end up with your results starting to look like this and as you can see, we're getting the flaking, and you can get the different layers up in here, starting to get really rotted looking. So then that's where we come back in. We add different pigments and colors to kind of add some weather to that. But this stuff needs at least 24 hours to continue to rot and rust, but you can already see that looks really, really good. So uh, we do need to tone that down a little bit. It is pretty intense. Um, that would be like right out of the bottom of the ocean rust. So we're gonna tone that down with a little bit of our uh, panel accent and we got some of our little um, Tamiya weathering makeup kits. So. Uh, so yeah, rinse and repeat you guys. I'm gonna keep doing this. Uh, there's really not much else I can show you besides uh, that. Remember, your developer goes on first after one coat of, you know, at least two, we'll say two coats of developer, then just start working it in with that hydrogen peroxide mix for the best result. Remember that mix again is one cup hydrogen peroxide, two tablespoons of vinegar, and one teaspoon of salt. And there's a little bit of egg left on the top of this container. I don't know if that's helping or not, but that could help maybe put a little bit of egg in there. Two eggs, more milk. Another thing is with this uh, rusty water we have here, you can, Jesse can get a shot in around here. You can see how I've used it kind of like rust would run. 
So I've got it kind of running down there. I've got it going between these areas on the fenders. You don't really, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. I don't know if you guys will see that, but you, that's what you can use that for. You can see it right here. I've done rust running down the corner of the cab and all the way up from here. That's another good thing you can use that for and that will just stay on there. So, so I'm gonna uh, finish banging this together. Uh, we got the interior just fire, looking awesome. We got a little RC truck sitting on here. Did I say truck? Trucks. RC trucks on here. <laughs> little remote controller. I lost the dashboard apparently. No, found the dashboard. We got the dashboard done. Uh, normally it just comes with a sticker that goes across here. We cut out all the pieces, laid that in there all nice. Did the gauges, some flat clear, some weathering on it. A little yellow mark on the wheel. Since it's a rock crawler, it's got the cut out doors. Figured why not? Uh, yeah, he's going to be very happy when he gets the truck back. We had it for two weeks longer than determined in the contract that we previously agreed to, but nothing was signed, so it just... <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to get this guy finished up. We'll get it back together, and we'll catch you guys back here in a few. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. Right about there, we've got all the rust laid out and all the damage and destruction the way we wanted it. It's coming together pretty good. i got the box setting up over there. Um couple little tricks we've used some of this orange is a little bit bright so you use some of your panel line accent stuff which we've done the door gaps and everything with to put the lines into I just kind of brush a little bit in there kind of add a little bit of darkness if you have, find some areas that are a little bit super bright or something like do a little a little bit down here so you know what I mean? so it kind of runs in with the rust pretty cool uh, this stuff is used for doing the panel lines very nice you kind of just start feeding it in from one point like gravity run it down and then you just take a power, paper towel and dab off the extra that didn't make it in there so pretty cool so yeah I'm gonna go back finish that off uh, also at the same time I'm just taking uh, some matte black and a brush and some acrylic and I'm just painting around the windshield so I can uh, make it look a little better than, than it did before so. So yeah, I was just moving on to the next step. We got the truck bed done. We got all the rust on. Now you can see the rust is pretty brown. I went and decided to clear coat this since we're going to be, uh, this truck is not for us. Um, the rust, if you leave it raw, involves a bit of maintenance because it keeps rusting. So you got to have to add a little bit of color or else it kind of, it gets a little bit bright and stuff like that. So, and we want to protect it for him rubbing on rocks and stuff like that. So I put a couple layers of clear on it and sealed it in. And then we just went back to using our Riser Rust highlight, which we've used in other videos by Citadel Products. And then you can just go back over top and highlight the areas with a brush and a little bit of your, load up some of your Riser paste here. And then you just need to go through and just brush it on. Let's see there. Just kind of don't cover it all. Kind of do like around the edges would be a little bit more orange than in the middle. So it's nice to have the dark layer and the light layer playing off each other. Plus I put all those highlights from the pigments in with the other color, kind of give it some real nice look to it. So, so you just kind of want to work around Maybe do a little line between here and here. Just mess around with it. Maybe kind of do a thin coat over, highlight everything up. Just a little bit in the middle area to the edges. Anyway, once you keep going, you'll end up with the product looking very nice, just like that. I don't know if you can see that there. Looking real good. Looking real good. We've got the. Uh, dash back in now at this point uh, dash was done in detail by us obviously the door notch in there looking fantastic all the rust and damage we'll get some good up close shots um, so Jesse can insert the little I'm talking about it right now uh, of the truck done but uh, yeah we're getting there I just need to uh, detail the rest on the back and uh, yeah finish it off uh, periodically I've been putting in layer after layer of the Tamiya uh, panel line into the panels letting it flow and darken up it's a very thin um, so you'll need a few layers to get that completed um, I did go through and brush paint out the box with matte black after I sprayed the Linex in it to give it the texture and then I always do the inside of the wheel wells in matte black I like to do the bottom but yeah and then the piece of plastic that goes between the bed and um, 
like the gap between the bed and the box that's exposed. I always do that black and that strip across there. So Okay, so I'm going to keep adding um, some more of this highlight. We'll pop back in here uh, once this is all finally assembled. Got the interior done there, put the monster truck on the seat and remote and stuff. Pretty cool. Once we get this fully assembled, we'll pop back with some close-ups. Uh, really not much more I can show you on this. Uh, we'll be doing more videos of rust and weathering and you know every time we do one we get better so it's very nice somebody gave us a donor truck to do this to we'll get this guy back together and we'll see you guys back in a few okay guys there we are a few days later a little bit of supplies lots of time lots of thinking and planning just kind of playing around remember as i said there's no real wrong way to do it just have fun right so uh truck looks amazing remember what it looked like go back to the beginning of the video it had the white interior and such now we got the fully detailed interior little toy truck on the seat um yeah, it's the bodywork damage that he was looking for, wanted. Um, yeah, he's very happy. Tyler, you happy with this? Absolutely. See, we even got his uh, sign-off approval. So uh, it's now 10 o'clock, and he's been waiting for this for a week. So he's gonna go meet the guys and do some trailing, and we'll get some video of it uh, down the road. Uh, since we don't own this truck, it's a customer's own truck. So we'll get some video sent in, and we'll get that posted for you guys later on. But yeah, it's looking fantastic. So we'll get some close shots for you. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of this video with this awesome little build. Uh, if you guys want some work done, give us a shout. Uh, we can give you a hand with that. Um, yeah, stay tuned. See you on the next one.